Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I tackle brakes on a BMW. I'll be doing the front brakes on this 328i N20. The rotors are a little bit smaller because it's not an M Sport. This is my go-to rotor. I've used these on a number of my BMWs. They are coated. Zimmerman's. As you can see, they have an anti-corrosive coating and hold up really well in harsh climates. For brake pads, this is my go-to. I really like these Akibono ceramics. The kit comes with a new brake wear sensor and your pads and lubricant. So one thing you'll find with BMW brakes is they have a really good feel and initial bite, but they tend to make your wheels dirty really quickly. From experience, these have a similar bite and they feel really good. They're not noisy, but they don't really dust. So that'd be my recommendation. If you guys are looking for what type of brakes to get for your car, I would go with Akibono pads and Zimmerman coated rotors for any variant, really. If you guys are new to my channel, I bought this F30 for 3,500 bucks uh, because I had a blown turbo i bought it off someone that had it sitting in their driveway for almost two years so the rotors were cooked and i did have full intention of replacing them but i'll show you what they look like so i actually planned on traveling and i wanted to make sure those brakes were in good shape and also I'm making this content so I can continue to upload while I'm gone. This will be scheduled and you guys can uh, get some content. So it's not my usual content per se. This is a pretty simple job, but I'm sure some of you guys will appreciate this info. So I'm just going to talk you through this entire process in case you guys are wondering how I tackle brakes. So we're going to get the front end jacked up and put on jack stands. Using a breaker bar to crack the lug nuts loose before I lift it up. On the F30, you should be able to get a jack right underneath it without needing to raise it up from the sides. And right about one third of the way in, there's a small circle hole right near the middle and a flat spot. That's where you would jack up right through the under tray. So you basically have the under tray touching up against that platform. You guys have asked me in the past why I don't get a set of quick jacks considering how often I jack this car up. I probably will, but these jack stands are six ton. You don't have to put it on any of its locks. You can have it all the way down so there's no safety issues. Uh, have all the height you'll need on a car like this. I'm gonna use a jack pad adapter. All right, we're safe to secured. Give the car a shake. Let's get that wheel removed. That came off easy because I've already kind of tackled the hub face because I had these tires changed. So you're gonna wanna grab a six mil Allen Put it in this bolt here and see if you get lucky if it just pops free easily or if it's seized. Give it a little whack. In this case, it's a Texas car, even though it's sat by the Gulf of Mexico, it actually is still going to come apart pretty easily. But you may find that these seize up, but not so much on a BMW. Consider there is some isolation from the threads. It's not like a perfect taper, so you may be okay there. I just grabbed the other tire from the other side to turn the wheel. It's really easy on these electric power steering cars. Considering we're not reusing these pads, what I like to do is insert a screwdriver between the rotor and the pad. I'm pushing the piston in via putting my screwdriver between the pad and the rotor. You may not want to do this if you're planning on reusing the hardware, but I'm not. So you can just kind of guide it in. That way you don't need to use a C-clamp or mess with it too much. Since this is just a single piston caliper, it's kind of easy. If you had dual piston, then you'll, you may need a tool. Something you gotta keep in mind is if you're doing this or you're pushing in the piston and your brake fluid reservoir is completely full, it may start to spill out of there and you'll see a puddle underneath the car. That's kind of normal. Just make sure you clean things up properly or it can eat away at your paint. But that is something that could occur because ultimately I'm pushing fluid back into the reservoir right now. It may not happen on the first brake you do, it'll probably be the second brake you do. So if we played our cards right, that will be completely retracted now and it shows you how much pad material would have worn away. All right, so now we wanna remove the anti-rattle clip. So what I like to do is just go in one side at a time from here and kind of just guide it out like so, so it doesn't go flying and then it loses tension. A good indicator that you can't get away with just changing the pads and not the rotor is if you were to try to slide up here and you're hitting a wall enough that it'll catch a screwdriver. This is like three mils in. Pads are hard enough that they'll actually eat away at the metal. So you may, be, you may think you're fine, but you're actually a low on material on your rotors and you have to replace them. Usually by the time you need pads, you probably want to just do the rotors. So back here, there's a couple caps that you got to pop off with your screwdriver. Like that, one there, another one there. Now you're going to want an eight mil Allen. It's the same on pretty much all BMWs from the last 20 years. Give it a knock. As you unscrew these, it'll get to a point where it stops coming out of the chamber and you have to actually get your screwdriver in here and push them out. But if they're well lubricated, they should come out easy. Or you can put a little bit of downward pressure like this and it will just force it to continue to come out. 
Like so, these are well lubricated, so they're not bad. But all the way going back to the E46, etc., they all look like this. They're pretty much the same design. So anything you guys will probably have should be like this, unless it's an M car or M Sport. I'll get a hook like this or something along those lines. Hook it on here or take it off. Your rear pad's gonna stay in. You can just pop this off and hook it up. That way it's not hanging on the brake line. I like to just hang it up there right off of the spring. So what I would imagine is this is probably the original rotor and this is the second set of pads. But what you'd wanna see is that these aren't bound up. They should move easily like this. This one is not moving so easily. It's kind of binding up. So this part's kind of rusted away. They weren't great. But these seem to be low dust compound. This should be an 18. So I would use a half inch for this. Now this rotor has to come off. Almost super rare that it will just pop off. So we'll hit this up with some rust penetrant. Since we're replacing the rotors, if you really want to, you can start hammering on it from the backside and whatnot. But if you're just following good general practice, you just smack here and here and here. You're trying to release this ring here, but also a ring around here. So let's see how bad these are. I'm imagining they're not gonna be terrible. As expected, that wasn't so bad. What's strange about this car is it's from a southern climate, but it's right by the Gulf of Mexico. So it actually kind of presents like a car that drove in a bunch of salt in terms of the surface rust. But when you get underneath things, it, it's clean because it's just from the moisture in the air. So that was probably a lot easier than it would normally be the case. But I would use a wire brush, clean up the surface. It's not so bad at all. Give your wheel bearing a feel, feels good to me. Now I like to use some anti-seize for the light coating. Try not to get in the threads because that will screw up your torque ratings. It's okay to get it right here because they can seize, but I wouldn't do it on the wheel lugs. That should be all the contact points that could potentially rust. Get your six mil Allen ready and your screw. Bring your rotor over. I like to point this at the top. If this was a non-coated rotor, it would have an oily film applied from the factory, which you'd have to wash off with brake clean before you even bring it over to the car. But since these are coated, you don't have to do that. It's just understood that when you first start driving on it, you're gonna just burn through the coating. So bring your rotor in place, get your screw. We'll torque that after. So now you have this. It's not heavily rusted in any way, but you wanna make sure that this section here where the pads will ride is rust free. Now I'm using some ceramic silicone lubricant, which is going to be heat resistant. You wouldn't want to use anti-seize right here because it would just kind of bake itself off. Just a light dusting here, just to help the pads slide around. No need to go nuts. And the, the brake pads will come with this, but probably not enough to do all the slide pins and to do this. This would be optional, but you can put some on the right here. If you're gonna put any grease anywhere near these rubber boots, you gotta be real careful not to use anything but silicone based grease because it will cause the rubber to deteriorate if you don't uh, use the right type of grease. It'll absorb into the rubber and cause it to expand if you use petroleum based greases. But just a light coating here to help it release from the pad. But really in Texas, I probably didn't even need to do this. So next up, uh, you can use some blue medium strength thread locker for these bolts here. You don't have to use a ton. Don't use red on this because it probably wouldn't come out next time very easily. One line is good. Bring this back over. With a good quality pad, the shim's already riveted in terms of reducing squeal and noise. You don't want to coat this with any silicone grease or anything to keep it quiet. So keep that in mind. You can just put it on dry like that. These parts are lubricated. So we'll load the front pad in preparation. Have this ready. Spray some brake clean onto a rag. Clean these slide pins. If they're hard to remove, you'll have to use a wire brush or a bench grinder to remove any crud off of them so that they can slide in easily, but these weren't in bad shape. So I can just use a rag and brake clean to get them in good shape. Bring down your caliper, load your new pad into it. Make sure your hands don't have any grease on them when you're touching the pad themselves. Get this roughly into position. If you played your cards right, it will go right down because you retracted the caliper enough. That's why I would do one side at a time. If you only remove one side, when you push this in, it won't push out the other one. But if you were to take both wheels off and hang up both calipers, you just knock them out in one shot. Every time you push here, it's gonna push the piston out on the other side. Now, to not risk getting any anti-seize in the channel, what I would do actually, I should have mentioned it before, 
is put your anti-seize here on the caliper bracket so that it will find its way into the threads but not have to coat these threads with the anti-seize. Now you don't have to use a lot of grease here. You don't have to like pack it in there or nothing. Just enough to lightly coat it. Because if you use the right type of grease, it won't evaporate. It won't dry out. It will last long enough that by the time you get to the next set of pads, it still feels a little bit tacky or greasy. So just lightly coat that. Get your eight mil to hold it. Bring it over. Just slide in with basically zero effort. You can start threading it in. For these uh, 18 mils up here, I'll give you the torque value. I'm gonna only be able to torque the lower bolt with my torque wrench, because there's not enough room to get my socket on there. The 18 mil caliber bracket bolts are getting torqued to 81 foot pounds. All right, the eight mil slide pins are getting torqued to 21 foot pounds. Put our caps back on. You don't really have to clean up the anti-rattle clip. Basically just get it positioned on an angle like this and then use your thumbs to push it in like that. Important point before we forget is before you drive off the first time after doing the brakes, you gotta pump the brakes a few times. Otherwise, the first time you try to stop the car, it may not stop. If you're really close to an obstacle, you could hit it because you gotta get the piston to come back out. So lastly, the only thing left is to torque this here. This rotor screw is only 12 foot pounds, so you should be able to just hold the rotor with your hand. So that's essentially it. We'll put the wheel back on. You can torque these to 85 foot pounds. I like to do 80 foot pounds on wheel locks and I like to do 100 on the rest. It's probably a little overkill, but these are the same bolts that you'd find on like an X5 or whatnot. They're heavy duty, so they're fine with that. So I do 180 on the wheel lock key, a little bit lower than recommended for the wheel lock key, but they can be tricky. Don't ever put anti seize on this because it will interfere with your torque value. So we'll torque these when we're on the ground, of course. So when you get to the other side, the only difference really is gonna be the inclusion of the pad wear sensor. But we'll talk about that over there. As you can see, these pads were kind of expired. They didn't have a lot of life left into them. If you notice on the replacement pads, there was a groove here. So the way I see it is they're due for replacement when that groove is no longer visible. And some pads don't have that groove, but in general, these were due. So now with regards to braking, there's a couple ways to approach it. On a commuter car like this, I would say just take it easy for like 500 to 1,000 miles, no heavy, heavy braking, and just let them naturally bed. If you want them to really start to bite right away, then you could do some high speed braking. You start at like 20 miles an hour, go to 30, 40, 50, 60, and progressively increase how aggressively you're pressing the brakes. And within a few minutes, you can completely bed them. But I typically just take it easy on them. And bed them in naturally. Now, if you wanna go the aggressive route of bedding in the pads, make sure nobody's around and make sure you can do it in an area where you never have to come to a complete stop because if you get a bunch of heat into the rotor and they're just in the middle of bedding and then you have to hold the pad against a hot rotor, you can cause a high spot or kind of kill the point. So this is about the only difference you're gonna find you gotta pull the pad wear sensor out. These don't usually survive coming out, so just plan on replacing it. Get a set of pads that will come with this, if possible. You can always buy this separately. There's a metal clip that sometimes stays in the pad. Going after the pad wear sensor. Pop this little door off. So actually what you commonly see is people don't tuck it in underneath this bleed dimple. You have to put it in here and then it snaps in here, snaps in here, snaps in up at the top and then snaps in under this little plastic cover. But that's the pad wear sensor routed. So I got this wheel put back on. I'm not ready to lower the car to ground level. So one thing you can do is use a torque stick with your impact gun to set the torque. So this is a hundred foot pound torque stick. 
All right, guys, that'll conclude this video showing you how to replace your brakes on your BMW. It's pretty much the same process for any BMW in the last 20 years or so, and that's how I do it. I actually debated putting this up, but I'm gonna be away for two or three weeks, so I wanted to keep the videos flowing, so consider it a filler video, or hopefully some of you guys get some value out of this. If this is the first video you're catching in mind, please consider subscribing. If you liked the video, please give it a like. It'll help it rank higher. Thanks for watching.